How's it going, you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs. I'm a big fan of solar. I've been doing a ton of DIY solar projects. I even have a whole other YouTube channel on DIY solar. And this is our latest project. It is a storage shed I'm converting to an office space. It's a really cool project. It has an insanely capable solar system on it, but there's one thing it can't do, and that is dependably heat that space throughout the winter. As much as I want that to work, or maybe you want that to work, it usually falls short. So we're gonna do a test today and see how much does it actually take to heat this space so you can translate that to your own project at home and make a better plan to ensure you always have a dependable source of heat. So I'll give you a little bit of a look at the office, what was a storage shed, it's a 12 by 16 modern, eight foot back walls, 10 foot front walls, that's a 36 inch man door on the back, six kilowatts of solar up top. We extended out the roof here, so I had a place to park the Kubota. It is on a bit of a retaining wall that gives me a 20 by 30 foot flat pad, where then I was able to pour my concrete pad, which is 12 by 16, to fit the main structure. You can see the zip wall sheathing, the green sheathing with the black tape to seal everything. So it's your wall sheathing, but also your moisture barrier. And then here in the front facing the forest, we have four transom windows, that French door, and we'd be putting a little floating deck there right on the front side as a place to sit. And then on the inside for insulation, we've done a few projects we'll point to later on for the channel. Went with rock wool, but we actually tested out fiberglass, rock wool, great stuff, wide spray, and then a Stanley spray foam. Now pricing to fit three of these bays. So one bay, two bay, three bays, it'd be $18 for fiberglass, $40 for rock wool. The great stuff comes in at $120 and Stanley 150. So these are basically not even in consideration. Rock wool is what we went with because of the little bit better insulation factor moisture resistance it kind of cuts down on the sound so it kind of deadens some of the sound quite a bit and just makes for a really great place so to do the whole 12 by 16 it ended up being about 400 dollars. that gives me r15 in the walls and then we have a two inch rigid foam up top that keeps ventilation through our rafters if you needed a little bit more you could just put rock wool above this in the rafters you'd still have ventilation and that would give you R25 instead of R10. So now let's kick off our test, and that's gonna be a 24 hour cycle where we're heating the space and monitoring it the whole time. It's gonna be a 1500 watt electric radiator. That's how we're gonna heat it. And I wanna answer two questions for you. One, even if you had a 20 amp circuit coming out to your shed, is a radiator like this enough to heat the space and how much does it cost? And then two, could you ever do this with the power of the sun? completely off-grid. We have one of the most extreme setups that you would ever see in the shed with the EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra X. And can this unit even do it? And how much would that possibly cost you if you wanted to run completely off-grid? And let me know in the comments, are you guys planning a shed? Are you just trying to insulate your shed? I'm interested to see where you're at in the process. And if you need some help, you can scan this QR code right here, or there's a link in the description over to everydayshed.com. We have free shed build plans, which are gonna help with your planning phase. We have our premium plans that give you extreme detail on each and every step you'll go through. We even have the DIY shed ramp kit, which is by far the easiest way to make a shed ramp. And it's even removable, so you can do your landscaping, or you can just keep it out of the weather during the winter months. But let's go ahead and jump in our results and see what does it actually take to heat this space for a 24 hour period. Now the testing is complete. During the daytime, I'd go out and just check on things throughout the hour and make sure that we are able to reach our set point. Throughout the test, 48 degrees Fahrenheit was the high temp during the test. 32 degrees Fahrenheit at night or zero degrees Celsius was our low point. And for the vast majority of the test, the thermostat on the 1500 watt radiator was set to 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Total energy consumed was 17.6 kilowatt hours. Now that is a significant amount, especially for an off-grid system. But remember our first question is, can the 1500 watt radiator keep up? Could it heat the space effectively? And that answer is certainly can. If we took 17.6 to give you how much would it actually cost times the average of 18 cents per kilowatt hour throughout the United States, 
that's going to give you right at $3.17 per day. So if you were grid tied, run a 20 amp circuit to your shed, do not run a 15 amp, make sure you have 12 gauge wire because you have a little voltage loss if you have quite the run between your house and your shed. So a 20 amp circuit, if it's cranking at 1500 watts, it's going to consume a lot of your capability of that 20 amp circuit, but it is going to do it. It's gonna heat this space. It has way more capacity than just what I'm showing here. So if you insulate your wall similarly to what I did and your ceiling or more, that 1500 watt radiator is gonna do the job. And in this instance, it was gonna cost $3.17 per day. That can add up, but you're gonna have no problem running that. Now, when it comes to off-grid, here is the challenge. Off-grid setups can do a lot. You can really set up a cool workshop or office space or she shed, but heating consumes a ton of energy, especially associated to the cost of the equipment. Now the day was actually not too bad, but we only got 10.9 kilowatt hours in from what we could collect through solar on our six kilowatts of panels on our roof. We did start off the day at 53%, so technically my battery never ran out. And if we look at our EcoFlow app, you can see how that solar came in. You can see the input bars hourly where we had partly sunny conditions throughout the day, but we only have a small section of the day where you're not getting input any other time but that heater load, the output is consistent. It kind of maxed out at the start at 1500 watts, but then it went down between 400 watts and 700 watts, depending on the outside temperature. The day previous to that was only 2.9 kilowatt hours, and the heat load would have been very similar. The day before that was 3.4 kilowatt hours. And if you ever tried to scope out an off-grid system, you're really preparing for those long durations of overcast multiple days or even into a week or more. And that's where a lot of guys that actually run off-grid and they're not even doing their heat load, they need to do a generator backup because in the winter months, and especially if you think you're going to heat, it's just not going to work. So I would say no-go, and that's a no-go with about a $15,000 system. If you want more details on the panels and the system, you can check out this video right here. I'll walk you through the complete setup that we have that's powering this office. And then if you wanna check out kind of where this 12 by 16 shed started off and the whole process, kind of a fun time-lapse video, you can check out this video right here and we'll walk you through everything from the actual retaining wall to getting the 12 by 16 storage shed version up and running. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on one of those next ones. Take care.